Good morning, and welcome to Timberlake Christian Church online today. So if you're listening on Facebook or YouTube, we're glad to have you with us. I'm Teresa Graham, one of the elders here, and we're online today because COVID numbers have been on the rise in our community, and we want to keep everyone safe. So for the the month of January at least, and we'll be reevaluating this as we go along. But on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, there will be a coffee and conversation time on Zoom, and it will be a very informal gathering of people. And if you'd like to join that, the link will be coming out every Friday in the News Blast, or if you don't get the News Blast, you can call the church office for the link to the Zoom coffee and conversation hour at 10 o'clock. After that, you will be invited to join us for the traditional service that will be downloaded each Saturday evening. So you can actually watch that earlier on Sunday morning if you wish, or you can watch it at 11 o'clock or anytime thereafter. And the kids Zoom will also meet at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, and that link also will be sent in the weekly news blast. For the month of January, other events that will be happening on Zoom, since we will not have any in-person meetings at the church, will be a deacon's meeting on Sunday, January the 9th, the time to be announced, finance committee meeting on Tuesday, January 11th, the time to be announced, The Timberlake Christian Church board meeting on Sunday, January the 16th at 5 o'clock. The elders meeting on January 23rd, immediately after the 11 o'clock service. So tune in, let's say, 12.15. The memorials committee will also be meeting in January, but that date and time have yet to be decided. So we'll be letting you know if you're on that committee. If you are not familiar with how to use Zoom, you may call the church office and they will help you get your computer set up or your tablet or your smartphone so that you can Zoom in and join any of these Zoom meetings that you want. The reopening committee will evaluate this in an ongoing manner and decide when it's safe for us to meet in person again. So we hope you'll join us on Facebook and on Zoom in the meantime. Thank you.
Our acute prayer list this morning, Uh, my former brother-in-law, David Cooper, memorial service will be this afternoon in Florida. Keep his family in your prayers, please. Ken Horton, who's a friend of Jackie Maddox and Bev Maslow, has COVID. My mom, Pat Couch, is still recuperating at Liberty Ridge Rankin Pratt from a compression fracture. Mary Frances Johnson has been moved to the Summit Rehab to recuperate. Bernie Miller is recuperating at home from pneumonia. Meredith Morris is recuperating at home from COVID. Jane Parrish is recuperating at home from cat bite. And Hossein Rezai is is in the hospital in Richmond, recuperating from surgery. The ongoing prayer list is on the, on your screen. I won't read those aloud to you. If you have any questions, you can check with the church office about those. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, O oh Holy God, as we come to you this morning, we pray that we will open ourselves to the guidance of your spirit, which dwells within us, that we would look to your spirit to guide us, to give us wisdom, to make decisions that you would have us to make, not just about church things, but in in our everyday lives, that you will always be our guide. 
We pray that you will be with those we've mentioned here this morning. We pray for comfort, for peace, for healing, that they will experience your love, God, and and will experience the love of this church body. Thank you for giving us this community of fellowship to support each other and to experience your love together as we share it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We just wanted to announce that Hazel Palmer, charter member of Timberlake Christian Church, passed away on Friday night in the hospital. Our prayers go out to Joyce, Denise, and their families. The arrangements will be announced at a later date. Thank you. The Gospel Scripture for today is Luke 3, uh, 15 through 22. The people were filled with expectation, and everyone wondered whether John might be the Christ. John replied to them all, I baptize with water, but the one who is more powerful than me is coming. I'm not worthy to loosen the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The shovel he uses to sift the wheat from the husks is in his hands. He will clean out his threshing area and bring the wheat into his barn, but he will burn the husks with a fire that can't be put out. When everyone was being baptized, Jesus also was baptized. While he was praying, heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit came down on him in bodily form like a dove. And there was a voice from heaven. You are my son, whom I dearly love. In you I find happiness. And also from Psalm 29. You divine beings, give to the Lord. Give to the Lord glory and power. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bow down to the Lord in holy splendor. The Lord's voice is over the waters. The glorious God thunders. The Lord is over the mighty waters. The Lord's voice is strong. The Lord's voice is majestic. The Lord's voice breaks cedar trees. Yes, the Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon jump around like a young bull, makes Syrian jump around like a young wild ox. The Lord's voice unleashes fiery flames. The Lord's voice shakes the wilderness. Yes, the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The Lord's voice convulses the oaks, 
strips the forests bare, but in his temple everyone shouts glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the floodwaters. The Lord sits enthroned, king forever. Let the Lord give strength to his people. Let the Lord bless his people with peace. May God add to our understanding these readings from the Holy Word. Amen. What do I do with that? It's a question I've regularly asked myself when I've been putting something together and the company seems to have sent an extra part or two. I start getting towards the end and I realize that, that I've got this part sitting there and I'm not sure what's going to happen with it. And so I start flipping through the last couple pages of the instruction manual and say, what do I do with that? Or what do I do with those? Because as I get to the end of the instruction manual, I think there's nowhere for any of that to go. And so I just keep building and hope everything's okay. And what I've realized over the years is sometimes when I keep building and hope everything's okay, it is. I just got an extra part or there's an optional way of doing it that was included in a separate addendum in the instructions. But other times I realize that when I ask myself, what do I do with that? What it should tell me is, don't go forward in the instruction manual, go backward in the instruction manual. Because what I realize is, is that it means I've done something wrong. Something is missing, and I'm going to have to do it all over again. And instead of just plowing ahead and hoping that it will all be all right, if I take a look back at what I've already done, I'll realize I missed that. I didn't do that step, and now this thing is not going to work the way it's supposed to work. And all of the work I do after that moment, it's my own fault. I'm going to have to undo it and then redo it once I've put the thing, the item, in place. This is a particularly large problem because Oliver and I have gotten into building Legos a lot lately, and Legos are always having extra pieces. But you're never sure if it's the extra piece that came with the Lego set, or if you missed something. And so I'm constantly questioning myself and looking back and trying to figure out what is going on with this thing that I have built here. Is this a missing piece that I, I didn't see, or is it just an extra piece? We actually need to do that in our lives. We need to be able to ask, what do I do with that? Regularly, which means slowing ourselves down. In the scripture readings this morning, particularly in the gospel reading, we see the baptism of Jesus, but first we see the people asking John, are you the Messiah? And John could easily get caught up in the moment and say, sure, yeah, I'm the guy. But he knows he is not. And so he tells them what is coming what will happen and how they will know the Messiah. In Jesus' baptism, John calls out a number of things. First, he says, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with fire and with the Spirit. These elements of baptism are actually the elements of life on earth. They have been acknowledged by every society that has ever existed because they are the elements that allow us to live. First, we have water. The waters of John's baptism that continues on. One of the things I've noticed in reading through the scriptures, particularly the stories of the New Testament church, is that there are a number of people who have only received John's baptism after becoming believers in Jesus Christ. Whether it be Peter in the book of Acts or Paul, they're constantly coming upon communities of believers that have only received the waters of baptism, the baptism of John. They have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of fire that John promised Jesus would bring. Water 
is an important part of our baptism. It washes us clean. It starts us anew. And we are birthed from it. But it is missing the other elements that are necessary to be followers of Jesus Christ. John mentions the fire of Jesus, the baptism of fire, that will actually refine, will cleanse, will get rid of the things that are unwanted, and will keep the things that are wanted. It says that the fire will be a threshing fire. It will get rid of the chaff and keep the wheat and the grain. And so when we are baptized like Jesus, when we are baptized into Jesus, that baptism will be a process that refines us, that gets rid of the stuff that we don't need, the what do I do with that stuff that is just an extra component, but keeps that which we do need. And when something just keeps sticking around, it is an invitation to us to say, is that actually something God wants me to have? In my life? Is that telling me something that I need to pay attention to and look backward in the instruction booklet to see if this is indeed something that God has placed in my life? And so we have to be willing to, when we go through the fires of baptism, note the things that seem to just fade away, we don't need those anymore. But the things that stick with us, they are things that are absolutely necessary. Things that we will either find useful or will teach us or will simply be present for us in our lives. Then we also have baptism of the Spirit. This is the third element, the element of wind and air. In biblical terminology, I've talked about this before, wind and air and spirit are all seen as one thing. It is what allows us to live. It gives us life through breath. It moves us and it helps us. And so we have to pay attention again to the things that give us life, the things that move us, the things that keep us going. Those are essential elements of our own lives. What is it that is like oxygen to you? Go back to that. Remain in that source. That is something that God has given to you. Whether it be prayer or study of scripture or meditation or walks in nature or whatever it is, when we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we have to remain in that which gives us life. It is the element of wind and air that takes dry bones, that takes dirt, that God breathes into the atom in Genesis. The thing that has been formed of dirt but does not yet have life. What are the places in our life where we need the breath of God, the wind of God, the air of God to breathe upon us? And give us life. And in those places, let's seek it out. Let's say, what do I need that is life-giving for me? What do we need that is life-giving for us? We have, in fact, probably found ourselves again in a time where we're missing out on some of that which is life-giving. We found ourselves again virtual. I stand here and preach in a sanctuary minus a congregation. Our community gatherings are things that are life-giving. And so during this time where we are missing out on this one thing that is life-giving, let's make sure we do other things that are life-giving. Let's stay in touch with each other. Call each other on the phone. Check in on each other. Get on Zoom when we can to see each other and stay connected to that life which connects us as a congregation as well. You might be thinking, wait, the fourth element earth. Where does that come in? We've got wind, we've got fire, we've got water. We've got those three elements and we know what is important about those three elements. But what about the earth? The earth is present in Jesus' incarnation. For Genesis tells us that we are made from dirt. And Jesus shows us that that is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. It is a God thing. It is the way that God has intended us to be. Made from dirt. Refined by fire. Given life 
by air and cleansed by water. The dirt that we are made up of is sacred. It is stardust. It is the thing that we are made of. And so as we pay attention to the four elements of Jesus' baptism and the fact that they are also the four elements of life as we know it here on earth, we can celebrate, we can simplify, we can remove the things that are not elemental but are just our own creations and focus back on what God has made us from. And we can ask the questions when we realize that we have an element of what do I do with that? What do we do with the earth, water, wind, and fire that we have been given in our own lives? How do we allow that to work in this world? What do we do with it when God allows something to remain in us? I said that sometimes when I'm making something, I, I, I have that extra piece. I mentioned, y'all, y'all probably remember that a few months ago, back in September, Kevin McNeil, uh, our regional monast- minister and the pastor of Bethany Christian Church in Roanoke, came up and preached, and he had this axe handle. His sermon title was, Don't Lose Your Edge, and, and he had the axe handle to remind us that we don't want to lose our edge, and that if we, since we lose our edge, we need to return to God. It's kind of that extra piece. What do I do with it? Well, without the axe head... We need God's help to remind us what to do with this axe handle. And he left me with the axe handle, so I've got this as a reminder. But I've got to be honest, God did something new this fall. He gave me an axe handle. I've never had an axe handle before. But I wasn't left with just an axe handle. In October, I I did a wedding for my cousin. His name's Calvin and his, his now wife, Catherine. And there, they gave me a gift of a hatchet. I found my edge. I still don't know what to do with it. But I'm going to keep asking that question, looking back and looking forward and asking God, what what is going on? Why do I have these pieces in my life? Because they just showed up. And I don't know what to do with them yet. We got to keep asking that question because that is actually one of the questions that our baptisms lead us to and that the baptism of Jesus leads us to. What do we do with it? Our baptism and Jesus' baptism is just the beginning. It is the start. It is hearing that voice that spoke to Jesus and said, this is my son, my beloved. Hearing it in our own lives that we are beloved children of God. Now, what are we going to do with it? What do we do with the knowledge that we are beloved children of God? And what do we do with the earth, water, wind, and fire we have been given in our lives? We have these pieces. And as we go, the Spirit will guide us and help us to see What do we do with this now? What do we do with these elements that we have been given? For we have been baptized together into Christ so that we can live out flesh and bones, breath, voice, passion and fire, and water for cleansing, for making us fresh. And we are invited to see what it is God would have us do with what we have been given. Amen.
Earth, water, wind, and fire. All four are, are powerful and fluid elements in creation. They are sometimes invisible, but they're certainly mighty. They cause things to move and shake and flow and sometimes uh, rearrange things according to God's plan. 
As we're gathered about this table today, we are here to be reminded by some small things. Uh, this loaf of bread reminds us uh, of what bread we might have on our table, our lunch table, breakfast table, dinner table, snack, whatever. But when we look at the bread and we think of the Christ and his using the bread that was on the table that night when he was gathered with his disciples, this little symbol begins to empower us to remember not just the bread, but also the love that he gave to us uh, through his teaching and through his example. And as we gather about this table, we remember that. And also, the cup we remember, the blood that he shed. The blood in that time was considered the, the element, the essential element of life uh, by the Jewish people, by most people at that time. And he gave us his life as a, a kind of an exclamation point. Uh, um, just a reminder of, of the, the deep importance of the ways that he was bringing to us about how to live our lives, how to treat one another, and in the same way grow to love God as we love one another. So we're at this table uh, remembering earth, air, fire, and water, but also the bread and the cup that, uh, that he offered as a reminder to us about the life of love that he wants us to lead. Pray with me a moment. Dear God, as we come to this table, whether it's uh, from close distance or from farther distances, we are together, and we're together uh, around these two symbols, the bread and the cup. We pray that you would bless them, not just in this place in Lynchburg, Virginia, but in all the places where we might uh, eat bread and drink from a cup, and just have them think, you know, Jesus used what he had to remind us that our love for one another and for you must be everyday things, though just little and maybe insignificant in our hands. They mean so much as we integrate them into our lives, our lives of service and love. So bless the bread and the cup as we share them today. In Jesus' name, amen. When Jesus was met in that upper room uh, with his disciples, he took a piece of bread that was there, and when he had said a prayer, as we have said here, he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. As often as you do it, eat it in remembrance of me. And likewise, after the supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup, which contains the fruit of the vine, is a sign of the covenant that I make with you, a new covenant, a new covenant of love, that you love one another as I have loved you. And as after you drink this, remember that this is a new beginning a new beginning for you, for the forgiveness of sins.
For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup in my name, you proclaim my life, death, and resurrection in you and for the world until I come again. Amen. When we give of our offerings, we don't always know what's going to happen with them. It's kind of a, what do we do with this? But we give them knowing that God will do something with them. That what we offer in the plate or through Givelify or through the mail will go and bring life. It will be air for some people and water for others and fire for some and earth for others. But we know that when we give, it brings life. And oftentimes that life will come back to us. And so though we cannot gather in person, let's continue to give to support the life-giving ministries here at TCC and through the Christian Church Disciples of Christ and the Body of Christ worldwide. Let's continue to give in whatever ways we are able so that our ministries can continue even when we aren't able to meet in person.
Now, if you'll please bow for our benediction. Go knowing that the earth of your body is accompanied by the breath of God in the wind, by the fire of God refining you, by the water of God nourishing and cleansing you. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget to get out there and give them heaven.